Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I'd like to welcome each of you to another, what we refer to as a Fantastic Insights video segment. Uh, it's whereby we introduce to, you, introduce to you some very prominent personalities, all of whom are having a very positive impact on the ever-growing world of franchising. Uh, I, my name is David Craighead. I'm the Chief Franchise Expansion Officer for both FranServe and also the Franchise Dictionary Magazine. And today I'll be your host for this week's Fantastic Insights segment. Uh, FranServe, for those of you that may not be familiar with us, is uh, recognized as the world's largest franchise consulting and expansion organization. We have a very simple mission, and that is we change people's lives in a very positive way through franchise ownership. And we do that through a network of incredible franchise brands in 39 different industry categories. Uh, our growth initiatives are very well supported by a growing portfolio of franchise consultants. The industry refers to them as brokers, uh, all of whom are dedicated to helping their clients explore franchise opportunities, which are deemed to be a perfect match for their individual search criteria. And today I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Jeff Gartner, who serves as the president of Hudson Valley Swim Incorporated. He's also the president of HV Swim Franchise LLC, headquartered in uh, Hopewell Junction, New York. Hudson Valley Swim is a full service swim school uh, with a lot of emphasis on proper swim techniques and of course water safety. Hudson Valley Swim has been teaching infants, children and adults all ages to swim since the company was founded in 2003. So Jeff, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, as I pass the microphone to you this morning, this afternoon, excuse me, please share uh, with us your business model description and your personal perspective on Hudson Valley Swim. Thank you, David, for having me. Uh, my name is Jeff Gartner. Um, the Hudson Valley Swim business model, it's designed to be a very low cost uh, opportunity for the franchisee. Uh, we use a pool rental model rather than build your own pool. Uh, it has a lot of advantages. Um, we leverage underutilized pool space in fitness facilities, tennis clubs, community centers, hotels, schools, etc. That allows us to provide a, a low startup fee for the uh, business owner. We have low operational costs. Uh, time to market is uh, much faster than uh, the time it'll take to build a pool. And the best part is it is very profitable. The costs are mainly due to rentals and mostly payroll, uh, along with all the other costs. I would imagine that your startup time is greatly reduced because your clients are not having to build a pool. Yeah, and it's significant. So if you were to build a pool, you know, you're... you're getting the financing, you're looking for locations, you're purchasing property, you've got to get all the, uh, um, the, uh, the build out, uh, design, architected, you're bringing it to the, uh, the town boards, getting the uh, zoning approvals and so forth. That's probably a two year um, by the time you're done. Uh, we can probably get you up and going in maybe four months, uh, really depends on how uh, ambitious uh, that you are. Um, as soon as you're able to find a pool, uh, go through the training program and, uh, and interview and, and uh, hire instructors and send them to us so that we can train them up. Uh, really, it could be done in you know, three, four months. Very good. That would make you very attractive, I'm sure. Your concept very attractive. Yeah, that along with the, uh, the low uh, startup fees. Yep. Uh, for sure. So, you know, net worth is uh, very low. Uh, your cash on hand is very low. So it's, it's a great opportunity, even for somebody that wants to start part time. Okay. Do you have a mission statement that you live by? Yeah. So, so David, it's important to know that um, there are about 12,000 drownings in the United States every year. And of those, of those drownings, about 4,000 of them are fatal. And those are mostly of ages five and younger. So our mission is really to save lives, plain and simple. We provide a premier swim lesson program that'll serve communities throughout the country. Uh, we teach both 
safety skills, uh, as well as you know how to swim, um, we reduce drownings. And um, and and a lot of our swimmers. Uh, not only are swimming just to become safe in the water, there's also a, uh, a growing segment uh, that are swimming for exercise, health and safety. And I don't want to get ahead of myself here. And I don't want to have you repeat what you've already described to us. But in addition to what you've already described, are there any really unique branded distinctions of Hudson Valley Swim that may be different from what your competitors are offering? Most of our competitors are requiring a build out, a pool build out. And so we discussed the uh, pool rental model. Not, not all the swim schools require a build out. Um, so we differentiate from most, uh, but we're similar to others. Um, diff uh, unique features, we've developed a program that we believe is the best in breed. Um, we've used uh, industry best practices from um, American Red Cross, US uh, Swim School Association, USA Swimming, and more importantly, our own experience and the experience of a lot of the uh, really super experienced um, uh, instructors that, that have come to us. And we've adapt, uh, adopted a lot of their techniques and um, games uh, part of our program is, is having some fun in the water. Um, another uh, very unique feature is the class sizes that we offer. It's really small, so much different than the programs that put a, a dozen kids in the water with a high school student. We have very, very experienced swim struck, uh, instructors and, uh, and, and small class sizes, and we, we get outstanding results uh, as a result of that. And then the other area that I think a lot of places overlook is the customer service aspect. We, we actually stress that. Uh, that's an important part of our program uh, that uh, also goes very well towards our online ratings. Uh, so if you were to look at our online ratings, there, uh, there's a lot of mention to the outstanding customer service that they get um, from our staff. Very good, thank you. Uh, are you seeking nationwide growth with your program? Absolutely. Uh, so we, we were initially registered in, I don't know, a few dozen states um, and we'll add, that, add additional states quickly uh, um, as, as demand uh, requires. So we are looking to expand nationwide. We expect uh, to also grow uh, outside uh, you know, the, the U.S. as well, probably into Canada, I would figure. Very good. And we have uh, quite a few brokers that actually reside in Canada, so that should be a very natural fit for them as well. Um, tell me a little bit, if you would, about how you design your territories. What do you use for the metrics to design your territories? The... Um... The territories really sort of depend on the area that you're in. So we, we have a, uh, and, and once again, we're an emerging brand. And so we're not as, I'd say, experienced in, in designing the territory as uh, others. Uh, the good news is that we have, we're wide open. So uh, if there is a uh, swim school at another franchise, uh, um, they can come with us and, you know, that opportunity exists. But, um, you know, is a territory city or is it rural? You know, I'm in a rural area. Uh, and so from a, from a, uh, uh, a radius perspective, you know, my radius might be bigger than somebody in a uh, very dense area. But at a minimum, they're, they're probably in the three to eight mile radius and then really depends on the, uh, also the population. So the denser population will probably be a, a smaller radius, um, but then um, you know the larger radius is you know obviously for the uh, smaller populations. Okay, our primary job here at France Serve is to bring qualified candidates to you. For the benefit of the audience that are watching this presentation, would you please take a minute and just describe to us how you describe the ideal franchisee candidate for Hudson Valley Swim, Hudson Valley Swim. The first thing that's really important to know is you do not need aquatic experience. That, that might be something that would scare people off 
um, if, if they had to be an, an expert uh, instructor. They do not have to be that. You're going to hire those. And they're there. You know, we, we find them all the time. We, we are fully staffed full of those. And we have a lot of locations. So, um, you know, they're, they're there. Um, I would say this person might be very community centric, somebody that wants to offer something to their community, something that can be really proud of, um, contribute to their community in a lot of ways, not just to save lives, but also from a charitable uh, uh, perspective. Uh, we, we participate in a lot of charities. Uh, we sponsor a lot of uh, local teams and so forth. Um, you know, yeah, that gets the name out, but that's, that's sort of core to uh, how Joan and I are uh, um, just in general as people. Um, this person might be somebody that wants to start part-time and, um, you know, looking to maybe go full-time in a, in a year or two. Um, there's really a front office and a back office role in the uh, in the operations, and you could hire somebody for the front office, really managing the the uh, the phone calls and the emails and and so forth. Uh, and while you work the back office sort of part time, and or the the the, uh, the candidate uh, does this, you know, where they're you know loading the registration system, dealing with the insurance companies, um, you know getting things set up, uh, handling the books, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, I started off doing that part-time while I was working a full-time job. And um, it's, it's pretty easy to do uh, initially until you really start to grow, uh, which case there's a, a lot more hands-on. Uh, this person probably is a, ba a jack of all trades. You know, just maybe someone that really wants to run a business, but, you know, any, as any small business owner would know, you know, they're, they're the sheriff and the dog catcher, you know, you're going to do a lot of different things, um, uh, you know, especially on the back office side of things, um, all the, the social media marketing, um, you know, just getting, get, getting set up with the payroll systems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so somebody that really likes to run a business, but, um, you know, wants to do it uh, part time would be uh, would be ideal. And they can hire the front office person. And that could even be a part time role initially until you really start to scale. Uh, and then somebody that's really uh, organized, somebody that pays attention to detail. Uh, that's very important because there's a lot of little things as a small business owner that you need to be able to do. And, uh, you know, we've laid out uh, a lot of that in, um, in fact, most of that in the, uh, in the, in the training materials and the, and the training sessions that we have, but you really need to be very organized. It sounds like your owners could actually assume the role of a executive owner. Is that correct? Am I reading too much into that? I, I could, I could see that definition. Sure. And could your owners scale the business so that they have multiple cities that they operate? Absolutely. So that, that's what we do. I mean, so we've been in business for 20 years and I'd say, you know, most, most of our growth has been in the last 10 years. Um, we, we, um, we moved around a little bit with locations. We settled on one in uh, Newburgh, uh, Newburgh, New York. That's our main location. And then we expanded. We're in Middletown. We're in Hopewell Junction. We're in Wappingers Falls. We're looking to expand even further. Um, it's really um, once you once you have the infrastructure in place, which you know we we do, um, being able to expand is uh, is is really a lot easier. For the career-minded individual that may be coming to you from a corporate position, maybe starting off part-time, how quickly could they move into a full-time role and leave their corporate job behind? First of all, I am a big proponent of cutting the corporate cord. <laughs> and I think this is a perfect opportunity it's a perfect business to do that because you can start part-time. And when I say part-time, you could utilize the really high demand times of the day uh, for, for pool time. So like say four, you know, during the week, 4 p.m. to uh, 8 p.m. on the weekends, you know, six hours starting at, uh, at 9 a.m. Um, those are really the sweet spot of the program. 
clearly not the entirety of the program. So we, we actually start at 10 a.m. during the week and we go all the way to 8 p.m. at night. Um, the, um, this person, like if you were to take a look at the, uh, potent, the revenue potential, even for a small part-time program, and given the profitability model that we have, it's, it's incredible. Uh, it's really, really impressive to take a look at this particular business to see how soon you could cut that cord. So for instance, um, I've run a, uh, a model where a very, very conservative model where in those four to 8 p.m. And, and six hours on Saturday, six hours on Sunday, you could easily at a minimum have 200 swimmers every session. And our sessions are seven or eight, uh, um, seven or eight weeks. Um, to put that in perspective, we have uh, locations that are running at 400. We have one at 650. I mean, so it's 200 is doable, absolutely. So at an average fare of very conservatively, $200 per student per session uh, and six sessions per year, you've got 200 students by, by $200 by six sessions, that's 240K in, in uh, gross sales. The, the um, expenses against that predominantly are payroll and your rent. Um, and then obviously things like your franchise fee um, uh, percentages and, you know, a percentage for uh, marketing and, and then, you know, insurance is pretty cheap and a few other things. I'd, I'd say against that 240K, you're probably looking at 90, no more than 100K in expenses. So you're looking at with a very part-time single instructor uh, model running at 140K in profit. And that's very realistic. Sounds so, very attractive, very appealing. Yeah, so if you're in the corporate world and you're making 140K, this is the kind of business. And, and, and as I said, add a second instructor, you've doubled your sales, your, your, uh, your expenses, uh, especially for rent, don't change. And um, you know, your payroll is what goes up linear, linearly with the number of hours and, uh, that instructor's teaching. So once again, you know, maybe your add-on to that is, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 K for an additional instructor to generate another 240 K in, uh, in sales. Right. And you mentioned, you mentioned the instructors. Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, the training, the certification, the licensing that a, an instructor needs to bring to their franchise owner? What is required? Uh, I would imagine it differs from state to state, but what are the basics for that? Well, for starters, there is no certification that is mandatory for an instructor. Experience is really what we are looking for. Uh, it's experience, and not just experience. It's, it's, they need to be a teacher of swimming. And you know as well as I do that every teacher that you had in, in high school, while they might be qualified, they weren't necessarily good teachers, right? Um, we're looking for good teachers with certain types of personalities uh, that we want it to be fun for the kids and so forth. But they need to be very nurturing to the children and fun for the kids. And um, so there is now, while there is no actual certification that's mandatory, a very experienced instructor often has something called WSI, the water safety instruction. Um, once again, not mandatory, but they tend to have that. And, and in fact, a lot of the instructors have more than just that as a, uh, as a uh, certification. They might have lifeguarding, they might be a pool operator, they might be able to train a lifeguard. Um, but it, so the more experienced they are, typically the more, uh, the more they have as far as certifications. Once again, we're looking for teachers. And so um, typically are the, uh, the head uh, instructor, maybe you call your, your aquatics director, they're the person that is the, uh, it comes to us for the training and uh, is the person that uh, continues with any ongoing training that we have and is responsible for training the other instructors. Now, once again, the instructors are coming from different programs. They, are, they might be very experienced, but what's important is that they're using the same level structure, the same skills for each of the levels, the same terminology for each of those skills 
so that any instructor could step in and to another uh, to another class and without losing a beat. Otherwise, uh, a lot of programs, they really don't have a training. So it's, yeah, this is an experienced instructor, but they're using a whole different uh, terminology and the kid's eyes are circling when he mentions that, you know, so it's, it's very important to be, to have that consistency. Right. You mentioned the eyes circling. I would imagine the instructors need to have that aptitude to get people beyond their fear of water too, I would imagine. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that's, that's, that's a combination of, of skills and experience uh, for sure. And, and being very patient. And that's the other thing. We're, we're not going to dunk kids. We're not going to throw them in the water. You know, we're, we're going to, we're going to work to their comfort level. Uh, and that goes all the way to. A adult pro and, um, the, you know, we started out years ago where we had like maybe one class a week and now we're, we're probably running six classes that are completely full every week. Uh, and because they're so, um, they're so in demand there, there's so many people looking to, uh, for exercise. You, you make me think back to my swimming instructor. My swimming instructor was a high school football coach. And he was about 400 pounds, big, brutally guy. And day one, he threw me in the water and scared me half to death. So I'm glad to know your instructors don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we actually uh, think that um, um, a lot, there, there's a lot of gym teachers that we, we see over time, actually, and a lot of teachers that have a uh, aquatics background that uh, we bring in just in general for uh, um, for, for uh, Sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, we bring in as instructors, but yeah, once again, they, they have to be nurturing. Sure. Um, otherwise, they'll just scare people off. I mean, some people come to us with fears that they've had for 60 years, yep. you know, and those fears might just be just because it's just developed over time. And some are, are real fears based on experiences that they've had, um, you know, where they might have been a drowning experience that they had either directly or uh, through somebody else that they knew. Uh, yeah. yeah, my instructor scarred me for life. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, we can fix you. I appreciate the compassion your instructors have. Yeah, we can fix you. Okay, <laughs> I'm fixable. <huh? laughs> Glad to know that. Well, Jeff, thank you for the pleasure of your time today. Uh, you've really helped me to understand uh, what Hudson Valley Swim is all about. And for the viewers that are going to be seeing this, this interview, I'm sure this is going to bring more qualified candidates to your uh, doorstep with a better education and a better understanding of what Hudson Valley Swim has to offer. So I want to thank you again for your time. You've done a great job, very informative, very educational. It's exactly what we were hoping to, to receive from you today. So with that, we will adjourn today's uh, Fantastic Insight segment. And uh, if anybody has any questions about this brand, uh, my contact information is on franserve.com. And uh, we'll connect, we'll put, put you in direct contact uh, with Jeff and his team so that we can put all of you into a good swimming mode. And, and especially for those that want to be a franchisee, for this ever-growing brand. So once again, Jeff, thank you for the pleasure of your time. We do appreciate it. And with that, we will adjourn today's session and call this uh, recording a wrap. Thank you very much. <laughs>